All right, welcome back to the next episode in the series. Here's where we write out our first program and build it to run. In the last episode, we created a new simple list project folder where we're going to actually create a new file in. If you get any suggestions for installing more extensions at the bottom right corner of your screen, feel free to do so. But we have the main extensions we needed from the last episode. Anyways, with our new project opened up, we're gonna create a new file. I'm gonna make things a little bigger here so we can follow along, but I'm gonna select this option here, which says new file, and then I'm gonna get a new field where I can type in my file name. I'm gonna call this main.cpp. Notice how the icon changes and it says C++. I'm gonna press enter, and that's going to create my first file, which is just a .cpp extension, short for C++, and now I have a line number one with a blinking cursor. I'm actually gonna increase the size of this overall IDE so we can all follow along and see the code more easily. The reason behind naming this main.cpp is because the C++ and C compiler expect a starting point called main. We'll talk more about this in a second, but just know it is kind of a strategic naming convention, and that's because the compiler will look first for the main function in order to actually start other functions or fork to other functions whenever you invoke the program at first. We'll see what I mean in a moment, but let's get started at writing our first few lines. First, I'm going to include the IO stream library. This is what's known as the standard library header. It basically provides us with ways to interact with the system, giving us input and output stream capability, and is commonly used for terminal-based operations. Don't get too caught up in this, just know that it supplies us with some basic functionality that we'll need to use in order to interact with our system. Next, we're gonna write our first function. We're gonna type in int space main. Then we're gonna do open close parentheses followed by open and close curly braces and put our first line here in the middle. This is called a statement that goes in between the curly braces of a function, function being main. And what we're going to display is hello world to our console or terminal. That way we can show the world we've created and ran our very first program. The way we do this is we first do std colon colon, then we'll type in c out, and notice as I'm typing c out, you'll get different recommendations. I did notice a c out function that's part of the os stream portion, which is the library that we included up above. You can definitely use this functionality here to help you select varying different functions if you're unsure of what's available. So these characters will now get printed out to the console if we do two angle brackets, make sure that they are positioned in this fashion or else things will not compile correctly. And we're gonna put quotes and just type in hello world. And I'm gonna use another standard library function. If I do STD, notice I have to do the colon colon. This just helps the compiler relate to what library you're using in order to call out a specific function. This function is called ENDL, which just stands for endline. I'm gonna end with a semicolon. And finally, I wanna just return something, which just tells the program if it's successfully compiled and ran, a zero exit status means everything was successful. One thing I missed was two more angle brackets. These are known as insertion operators. So we're inserting some text into the console output, and then we are inserting an endline character with the string that's also going to get passed into the console out function. Another thing we wanna focus on always is up here, this little circle up top that I'm pointing to now, is important to realize because that means there are changes that went unsaved. Always make sure that that circle is gone before trying to compile something. Otherwise, your changes are not going to get made in the compilation and you'll probably receive errors or have the older version of the program that you had before you made changes. Anyways, that goes away pretty easily by doing Control S or saving the file in whichever fashion you want. So I did Control S, notice it goes away. And once you've saved it, there's no better way of knowing what code's going to do besides running the code. And notice up here, we have different options, run code, run C, C++ file. We can use the run code option and actually run the code, which will get compiled below and you'll see some output. It says, hello world. So we've successfully created our first program. Congratulations, great work if you've gotten this far. Now, if you do get some sort of errors, for example, like G++ doesn't exist, well, that means your system isn't prepared and doesn't have the proper compilation tools. The easiest way to get the compilation tools is going to be by starting up a terminal and installing them using sudo apt install build essential. This here will get you 
all the tools necessary for compiling C and C++ programs. And this comes standardly installed, I believe, with Ubuntu, but not all Linux distributions. So if you don't have it, make sure to install it. Or if you're having issues trying to compile and run your source files, like we did a moment ago, then you can run this. If I type in my password here, you'll notice that mine's already installed. So for testing purposes, I'm actually going to remove this so you can see what kind of errors you'll get if you don't actually have this package installed. And I've officially removed those packages. So since I removed them, I'm going to run things and see what happens. Look at that. Now it says G++ not found. So I tried running this up top, but what happened was it failed to find the C++ compiler called G++ and it's not going to work. That's why the build essentials is key. So now if I go back and install the essential tools, let's see if things work after installing them. All right, we go back and we hit the run tool and look at that hello world worked once again. So if your distribution doesn't have the proper compilation tools for C and C++, that's how you get them. There are equivalents to the build essential package using arch based distributions. For that one, it would be sudo pacman space dash s y and it's the base dash d e v e l package you can look this up for yourself but this is how you would in install the same equivalent essentials package on an arch based system if you want to install this on an r h e l based system you can do that too i'm just going to write it here in the terminal so you'll need yum or dnf to install gcc gcc c++ kernel devel and make. You can also replace this with a group install by doing yum group install and then just typing in development tools and that should also install them as a group of tools. Anyways with that being said if you need help installing for Windows or Mac OS I do have videos for that as well. Go check those out and we'll be able to continue following along together here in a moment. I want to briefly talk about what happened down here. CD just means change directory. So what this code runner program did is it changed directories to the location of the simple list project. Then it also, after that, ran G++ main CPP. So this is the compilation of our main CPP program that then got outputted as a program called main inside of our simple list directory. So if that's the case, we should expect to find main and we do inside the simple list directory. Fantastic. So anyways, back to this, what does this last part do? Well, it then takes the absolute path of the directory for the project and then runs main for us. That's why we see hello world. Now you kind of understand what code runner is doing in the background. It is switching directories, building and compiling our C++ program, and finally running the program for us. And after all that was done, we saw that hello world was spit out in our console or terminal, and it created a new line right after hello world, which is this end line right here, e executed with code zero, and everything was done within 0.393 seconds. I also briefly want to go through how this all relates. As you see, hello world is written right out here. We have this extra new line character, or basically line, because we added this end line, which just means new line. C out is what actually took these characters and spit them out into what we call here a console or terminal. Return zero is what the returned result was after the program executed successfully, so everything here. And we can see done exited with code zero, so code zero is in reference to this return zero. And finally, the IO stream library is what allowed us to include this C out in endline function. What's nice is in Visual Studio Code, you can highlight some of these functions to see what they actually do. It might seem tricky at first. We won't talk about what all this gibberish is, but we will see that it tells you what it does. So it writes a new line and flushes the stream. The manipulator is often mistakenly used when a simple new line is desired, leading to poor buffering performance. Anyways, that's a way so you can look at various different functionalities based on whatever libraries you include. I'll end it here because in the next video, I want to talk about another tool that will help us combine and compile multiple source files together, making it really easy to compile, build, and run our program. Code Runner is great for single source programs, meaning programs where we really only have one file. But when we get into more advanced programming, especially object-oriented based, we're going to have multiple files with varying source files, and they'll all need to be compiled together so that 
new utility will help us immensely. Anyways, again, congratulations on making your first Hello World program. You've successfully completed this episode in the course series. We'll continue on soon.